Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to lecture number 64. Uh, we have been discussing about the potential due to the body of arbitrary shape and later on we reduced it to a simpler format. Now we use that equation and work out for an oblate spheroid. So what does this mean? That uh, in the case of the earth though it is a pure shape, but say if I can approximate it in this way. I can show it like this as shown here in this place. That means here if I write as x, y and the z axis, so i x x will i y y this will be equal to i and i z z it will be different which we will simply write as i z. What does this mean? that this equatorial belt, this is perfectly a circle. This is your x and this is y. Okay. So, this is perfectly a circle and thereafter on the top, so in this, the, if this is a sphere, okay, so a sphere you just press it and make it like this. So, this becomes a, an oblate spheroid. Okay. So, it can be described by using this inertia terms. Okay. And now if we use this, then our the expression for u can be written as minus g m by r. This does not change, but the next term it is going to change, which is the perturbation term minus g by 2 r cube minus g by 2 r cube and this was i x x plus i y y plus i z z minus 3 I R. Okay. So, if we if the point P is located say the P is located somewhere here in the equatorial belt the point P this is the potential at point P which we are writing here in this case as p prime and this particular part we are writing as u and this part we are writing as r. So, if the point p is located in the equatorial belt Okay, so, in this case your equatorial belt it will come here is not it. So, what will be the i r in that case? This we have to guess okay, and it is easy to do from this place. which will of course, we will do uh, once we describe it in a particular format and thereafter we will do that. So, for the point in uh, let us write it a general way first and then we will come to that. So, equatorial belt means you are now located here as shown along this line. Suppose, this line is here the point P is located. So, what will be the moment of inertia about this point? So, the, this becomes I r in that case moment of, of inertia about this line. If this line is somewhere else then it becomes different. So, we all already we have looked into that uh, 
2 i 0 we have written as i i i square uh, i i i plus i eta eta plus i and this was just the coordinate notation used for this. So, it is a convenient to write this as i x x plus i y y plus i z z rather than using this uh, notation and whatever the earlier we have written it is a because of that only okay. because of xi eta and zeta they are along the x y z direction and therefore, it is the same thing. So, the perturbation term r equal to minus 2 by minus g by 2 r q g by 2 r q and 2 i 0 minus 3 i r. So, moment of inertia if the equatorial plane if we are taking about this line point in the equatorial plane that is in this plane lying in the x y plane. Okay. Then it is a simpler case, okay. but if we take any other point in a general point and let us say the p is located here and then the cosine angles of this p, okay. the angle from here to here, the angle from here to here, angle from here to here. These are the angles, these are called the associated angle from with this we associate the direction cosines. Okay. And so, if we write this as alpha, this angle as beta and this angle as gamma, okay, which is the angle made by the op vector, this is the op vector, this is point O and this is P here located. So, op vector is making angle alpha, beta and gamma. So, the cos alpha we will write this as L, cos beta as M and cos gamma as N. Okay, so, these are direction cosines of line O p. So, let L, M, N are direction cosines of line op or vector op in the x y z reference frame. So, how it is a given? This is given as i x x l square plus i y y m square plus i z z n square, where L and M as described here, these are the direction cosines. And uh, uh, this issue, how this uh, result is coming, again if I try to explain it, it will take longer time. So, uh, better again I am referring you to my lecture on the attitude dynamics and controls. So, if you go and look into the moment of inertia part, so there I have worked out all these details, uh, how this uh, expression arises. So, here L is it is a very much visible from this coordinate is x y z suppose. Okay. So, the cos alpha then this will become equal to L equal to x by r this distance is r from here to here this is the r vector. So, x by r similarly this will be y by r and this will be z by r. Okay. So, therefore, we can write here i r equal to i x x x y r square plus i y y y y r square plus i z z z by r square. And if i x x equal to i y y equal to i, then the above equation gets reduced to i r becomes equal to i times x square plus y square divided by r square plus i z z z by r whole square.
here this quantity x square plus y square we can write as r square minus z square and then this divided by r square. Okay, so, this is the first term here and then the next term which is plus i z z z by r whole square. So, what we get from this place this is 1 minus z square by r square plus i z z z by r square. So, this is i r. So, for this simpler case we can represent it like this. Okay. With this now we can insert this result in the expression for the perturbation potential. So, the perturbation potential r equal to minus g by g by 2 r q and then the quantities inside the bracket where 2 i 0 which is nothing but this quantity here. So, this becomes i x x becomes 2 i i x x plus i y y we are replacing this by 2 i. So, this gets 2 i and plus i z z and then minus 3 i r. Okay. So, this quantity is your i x x plus i y y plus i z z which is nothing but this quantity then uh, the or the whole bracket then this can be represented as 2 i plus i z z minus 3 i r. So, we are using this expression there. So, 2 i plus i z z minus 3 i r. So, 3 times i r we insert from this place. So, i plus i z z minus i z by r square g by 2 r cube 2 i plus i z z minus 3 i minus 3 minus i z by r square and from immediate we can write here i z z minus i z by r square. So, thus we have uh, r equal to minus g by 2 r cube minus g by 2 r cube and then multiplied by i z z minus i and the other term this is that gets minus and minus sign from this place that will make it plus plus 3 g by 2 r cube plus 3 g by 2 r cube and then i z z minus i and z by r square. So, this is the perturbation potential and what it says that r is a function of the capital R which is the perturbation potential this is only a function of r and z.
that means it depends just on the radial distance and z others are not coming into picture okay and therefore if we try to find out the perturbation force if perturbation if perturbation which will simply write as f p perturbation force or uh, let us write as f p r so this will be equal to minus do r by or minus del r as per our earlier notation we write it minus del r and because this is only a function of r and z so we can write simply this as do u by do r times u r cap plus do u by do z times u z cap so from here we have got the perturbation potential okay. sorry this is r this is r and here also this is r now each of these this quantities can be determined so do r by do r this quantity if we differentiate this take the partial differential of this so this will be minus this becomes plus 3g by 2 r to the power 4 i z z minus i i hope we, you are aware of partial differential and the next term here this term we need to simplify a little bit this term is 3g by 2 r q times z square by r square times i z z minus i so this gets reduced to Three g z square divided by two r to the power five i z z minus i. Okay. So this term then we are replacing with this particular one. So we have to differentiate this quantity. Take the partial differential of this. Okay. So partial differential of this will then appear as. 3g with respect to r okay. so this becomes 3 into 5 this becomes 15 and then a minus sign will appear here in this point 15g z square divided by 2 r to the power 6 i z z minus i and do r by do z then here there is no z present this is present in r but we need not differentiate it that way we just need to differentiate with respect to z here in this place okay and if we do that we can write this as uh, 3 into 2 cancels out so 3g z divided by r to the power 5 i z z minus i and this comes with a plus sign okay now if we can uh, these two expressions we can utilize and uh, insert in the 
the expression for acceleration okay. and that will give us the perturbation force okay. and that perturbation is along the u r direction and the u z direction. So, what does this mean that uh, if we have this orbit okay. and already if you remember we have if this is the r vector located here. So, this is the point p. So, u r is located here in this direction and this is u theta cap and u a cap is perpendicular to. So, u r cap plus u theta cap this equal to u a cap. So, perpendicular to both of them. So, here in this case the u r is appearing and the z is appearing, but here the z is uh, in a direction z is lying along this direction. u a cap is perpendicular to this orbit, but z is along parallel to this direction ok parallel to this z direction. So, here you have u z cap and we will need to convert this in proper format. So, let us go ahead and do this work. So, if perturbation this equal to minus del r this equal to minus del by u r cap plus del r by del z times u z cap and insert this the quantities we have worked out earlier. So, from here this place 3 g by 2 r to the power 4 3 g divided by 2 r to the power 4 i z z minus i minus 15 g z square minus 15 g z square divided by 2 r to the power 6 i z z minus i and the last one this is 3 g z by r to the power 5 this comes with a plus sign u z cap and these two come with u r cap. u r cap and here this one multiplied by u z cap. So, this is f perturbation. Now, with this we are ready to work out our uh, the Langrange planetary equation. Okay. So, we write here first case for the equatorial orbit for the equatorial orbit. z equal to 0. If we do that, so this term will vanish. So, this term will drop out only leaving out 
uh, okay and z is also present here so this term will also drop out okay leaving us with only one term uh, let us check it Okay, uh, this is fine. We have done uh, one error has crept in here, so we need to correct that. Okay, so uh, the expression is okay. I have checked it. So uh, here, what we are getting, uh, 3g z. This part for the equatorial orbit, z equal to zero. So because z is appearing here, and also the z is appearing here. So both these terms they will drop out, and therefore the f perturbation this gets reduced to minus. 3g divided by 2 r to the power 4 i z z minus i times u r cap. So, this implies that the perturbation force is perturbation force this implies force is confined to confined to the equatorial plane. Okay, so the rest of the things we will discuss it in the next lecture. Thank you very much for listening.